working nine to five isn't enough. It's the early mornings, the late nights, and the weekends of grinding that set you apart. Those hours where it's just you working and working and working, except it doesn't need to look like this. This video isn't about being a workaholic and putting in 80 hours a week to chase promotions or bonuses or anything else. So if that's why you clicked on this video, sorry to disappoint, this is not the video you're looking for. This is for the people who want to master their craft and have this never ending desire for more. This is you at your job working from nine to five. At first, what you know and how well you know it is small, but it expands rapidly as you figure out what you're doing and you take on more responsibility. You can accelerate this growth through hard work, putting in those extra hours or soaking in the knowledge from your peers and your mentors, but you're still confined to this circle and over time, the circle starts growing slower. So even within one field, the work we do determines what circle we're in, because everyone has a distinct career path. It's why my circle looks a little bit different than yours, which looks a little bit different than your friends. And while all these circles do overlap, it also effectively silos us into one area. Over time, what this means is we'll have one relatively big filled in circle as we become more and more of an expert in a specific domain and the one surrounding it but nothing else. Surprisingly enough, I actually started feeling the effects of the siloing as early as my sophomore year of college. For some context, back when I was in high school, I had written a few iOS apps and also in my freshman internship. And then when I went to the sophomore career fair and I handed the recruiter my resume, the first thing he said to me was, oh, so you're an iOS guy. Within one year of college and with a whopping three months of professional experience under my belt, I had already been put into my circle as an iOS dev. And that was the circle where I got two more internships developing mobile apps. And then I graduated and got a job doing the exact same thing. Now, to be clear, there is absolutely nothing wrong with going really deep into one area and effectively mastering it, but you do so at the expense of being able to explore new parts of the field or even other fields that would improve your breath and would give you a new set of tools that you can use when you're solving problems. Let's say that instead of spending 60 hours a week on your job, spending the standard 40 hours on your job and then the remaining 20 hours on your other interests makes you look more like this. Over time, as you continue to experiment and utilize that 20 hours per week exploring different things, you begin to build out this interconnected network that allows you to take lessons from any one of these areas and combine it to not only make you better at your current job, but also opening the door for you to work in a wider variety of roles that you previously wouldn't have been exposed to. By building out this network, you're forcing yourself to go beyond your comfort zone and to tackle different kinds of problems than you would normally work on. In my evenings, I keep building my own apps to expose me to different languages and tools and techniques that are different than the ones that I use on the job. And doing all this makes me assume responsibility for the entire process. I get experience building out a UI, making architectural decisions, figuring out what features that users want and everything in between. And doing all this makes me better at the work that I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Doing this gets me to here. And a lot of what I do at work helps me with my iOS development and vice versa. But over the past few months, I've been trying to figure out how to get here. Areas that seem really interesting get more attention and grow out quickly, with other circles representing areas that I've either briefly explored or I'm just getting started with. And all this really boils down to the fact that I'm excited about software engineering as a whole, and not just the tiny fraction of it that I'm exposed to in my day-to-day -day work. Instead of just focusing on growing my expertise in one area as fast as possible, it's branching out into all these different areas, and then finding a way to tie it all together to solve whatever it is I'm working on. Doing this guarantees me that my skill set will never become irrelevant because I'm always keeping up on what's new and exciting, but it also helps me strengthen my core fundamentals that make me better at my current job. Now, the flip side of this is if you're not careful, you can go to the other extreme, lots of tiny shallow pockets of knowledge without any real meaningful connections or experience in any of those areas. It's the equivalent of writing hello world in every single language, technically touched it and compiled a program, but you're probably better off somewhere in the middle, exploring a few things at a moderate level of depth instead of 100 things at the most basic level, or only going into one specific area. And especially in a world where there's so much that you can do, it can almost become overwhelming deciding what to do. How do you prioritize your mornings, your evenings, and your weekends so that you're investing in the right areas without feeling like you're missing out on everything that's new and exciting, and everything else that you could be doing. When it comes to finding balance, at least for me, there's two things that I've been trying recently. To keep up with what's new and interesting in the field, 
I'm focused on finding sources that aggregate the most important information and then sharing that out in newsletters. This means that I can dedicate less than 10 minutes a day to skimming summaries and then popping open a tab for anything that seems interesting. Then whenever I have downtime, I can just look at one of those articles and see if it still seems interesting. And if not, I can just move on to the next one. And the second thing is for all the areas where I wanna go deeper and do some exploring, I keep a running list of anything that's caught my eye and has been sitting in the back of my mind. Then I try to prioritize which things I do first based off of some combination of interest, relevance, and difficulty. Sometimes this is language or tool-based, but in other cases, it might just be a book that I've wanted to read or a personal project that I just haven't made the time for yet. And assuming you actually wanna see any real progress with this, you can't do everything simultaneously. It involves too much context switching, and that's why I try to focus on a couple things at a time, and then as I either lose interest in something or I start finishing it up, I swap in something else and I stop focusing on that other thing. In the short term, you might not see major gains, but being consistent allows the effort you put in to compound over time, which means that even if you're only here today, in five years, you'll be here, compared to if you had only focused on your job. And that's why nine to five isn't enough, not because you need to be a workaholic, but because you need to invest time into learning outside of work. Anyways, if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed if you want to see more content like this. That's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.